Okay, guys, this is our grandkid room, our stocked pantry, and today I'm going to be packaging up some beans in Mylar bags. I wanted to show you what we have. We have black beans. They're, they're not in bags, and I've got 2,000 cc oxygen absorbers. It's a five-gallon. Okay, so here's our rice and rolled oats, and these are in Mylar bags. We did this in January. Uh, sugar we did last year we did flour last year and I think that okay that down there in the corner is rice last year okay so here's some whole corn kernels that you can um, grind up to make cornbread and stuff like that that I, I um, put those in all our bags and packaged them in there and also this is 2,000 cc oxygen absorbers, not bagged, a five-gallon bucket of red beans. And I think I told y'all that's sugar. So I think we have two five-gallon buckets of sugar, I believe. I have not did these yet, but I do have some done. So we have oats in these large uh, jars with oxygen absorbers. We did these last year, I believe. And then we have grits as well. I also have black beans. We uh, used our um, food saver to uh, take the air out. We did not put oxygen absorbers in these right here. Of course, I have more grits up there with oxygen absorbers in jars. Sorry, Miss Doyne, I have not taken them down. <laughs> She's afraid they're going to fall, and uh, I have not redone those. So today, the goal is, let me show you what I have. I have these beans that need to be bagged. It is a five gallon bucket of beans. I will show you in just a minute. All right, here's some pinto beans. And as y'all know, I forgot my tripod in Louisiana. I'm gonna use my old tripod and see if I can film. I'm gonna be going out later on in the week and uh, to get another tripod. So this is the gamma seals that we use. If we do things in Mylar bags, we uh, oh, if I only did it once, we used the blue bucket that is not food grade, but we they're in thick Mylar bags, what we put in there. So, but the rest of them are food grade, so I uh, forgot what I had in here. Okay, so that's pinto beans and black eyed, eyed beans. Okay, so, and this one is a variety of beans. Okay, so... Oh. All right, and then that's lentils. All right, I can, kind of forgot what I had in here. So I do need to make another bean run. I'm going to try to do a five-gallon ga bucket of pinto beans, but I wanted Mylar bag some of these beans up because it's just Leon and I, and I only use a half a bag. So I think I'm going to put them in Mylar bags with a, a 50cc oxygen absorber, just some varieties, not all of them as we use them throughout the year. And of course, if I put this in a five gallon bucket with 2000 CC oxygen absorbers, this will be long-term, not to be open for several, several years. But this in Mylar bags will be our go-to bean. So I think that's what I'm going to do today. So if you're interested in packaging up different varieties of beans in Mylar bags, then keep watching our video, guys. family i hope everyone is having a wonderful day yes i am in the vehicle and i am about to go to walmart because i need some more beans um because i want to do a five gallon bucket of pinto beans and i feel like i don't have enough but i also want to go check the prices of beans out at walmart 
Uh, last time we were in Walmart, I did not go in that section, I do not believe. I do not remember, I didn't see it on our video either. I do wanna go check out the prices of the beans in the bag. That's exactly what I'm going to do so right now. So I know that you often hear people on YouTube encouraging and pleading with you to stock up some food. And a lot of times those cries of please go on and, you know, get ignored. You know, people just turn their head. You know, um, I even have people that just kind of brush it off. Um, some of them are ridiculous, okay? But, you know, the, the ones that are sincere, you can see it. You can see it in their videos, you can hear it in their voice. And so I wanna be that person that's not gonna be ridiculous and go overboard and say that, uh, you know, the sky is about to fall tomorrow. But guys, you have to understand that inflation is rising. Prices are rising, it is going to get worse. In a couple of months, it is going to be worse than it is now. Um, our country is bankrupt. The government has is bankrupting our country. I love the Ukrainian people. I'm, I've been praying for them. I feel sorry for what they're going through. Um, I, I'm quite mad at Russia. Even Russia's, uh, a lot of Russia people are not for what they're doing to Ukraine. I am not saying that I'm for the Ukrainian president. I, you know, I do um, admire the backbone and strength that he has, but I know he's a corrupt. I know that he's in with the Bidens and things like that. And all the money that we're giving them is probably blackmail money. I understand that. I do understand uh, helping Ukraine out, but this $40 billion, all the money that we're ciphering in that country, you know, it sounds um, like selfish or sounds like I'm being harsh, but we need, our, our country suffering. A lot of people in our country are suffering. And I don't understand why we're the only ones forking the bill. Uh, other countries, if you look at the statistics, if you look at the graphs and what the other countries are giving, sharing, or providing to Ukraine, it's nothing what the United States is doing. Our government is sending them billions of dollars, and we all know why that is happening. I mean, I'm not blind. Leon's not blind. Yeah. There's some corruption going on there. And I believe we are having to fork the bill. Us tax paying citizens are having to fork the bill just to cover up some corruption, some blackmail corruption between the Bidens and the Ukrainian government. But needless to say, yeah, the citizens always suffer. The kings and queens get richer and the citizens suffer. The people of Ukraine suffer. Russian people are suffering. People all over the world are suffering because of corrupt government. And I also want to talk about one other thing. Talk about this fentanyl and the drugs that are pouring across our borders, killing our young people. Um, a lot of young people are into uh, recreational drugs, and it seems so innocent. You know, I don't think it's innocent at all, but um, society makes it look innocent, and I can understand someone getting addicted because I was addicted to alcohol at one time in my life years ago and every year that passes I, I rejoice because it's another year that is behind me because it was just a horrible life that I lived I, I did not see the sun I did not see the trees nothing was clear to me nothing was happy for me I was constantly in depression so when you start out with some type of addiction the world always makes it look fun. Friends and parties always make it look fun until you get addicted. Once you get addicted, your body gets addicted to what you're putting in it, and then you no longer have it or you try to step away from it, your body hurts, okay? And then not only that, you have peer pressure. You don't feel like you can function or have your own personality or, or your own character. You feel like you have to uh, be the life of the party and you can't um, associate or communicate with people unless you have some type of uh, drug in your system, whether it be alcohol, pot, any kind of drug that uh, alternates your mood. You, you, the enemy likes to tell you that, oh, people are gonna like you more if you're outgoing. The only way that you'd be outgoing is um, take something, take this. So yes, not only that, uh, it gets, 
gets our young people into selling drugs. You know, they, they think they can make some um, quick money. So they start selling for these drug dealers. And it's killing them left and right. Look at the statistics, you guys. It is bad. Our young people are overdosing accidentally. Um, marijuana is not like marijuana used to be back in the day. I was never a big marijuana smoker, but you know, the uh, drug is laced with fentanyl. It's laced with all kind of things. People are buying things out of the supermarket products and putting it in that. These young people don't know that. They're buying these cheap drugs and they're told that it's pure or whatever, it, it, but it's not. It's laced with something. And not only counting that, the um, ingredients coming out of the Wuhan in China, where the virus uh, was originated from, they're making some kind of fake fentanyl or, or sending some kind of ingredient to Mexico for them to make fake fentanyl pills. Then they're ciphering it over the border selling it to our young people and our young people are buying it thinking it's just a simple form of marijuana but it's not they're overdosing we know two young boys one that used to go work for my mom died last week uh, he was in his 20s he had just worked for my mom uh, doing some work in her yard and her garage and things like that his brother died a week before him and his brother was uh, 25 23 to 25 something like that and then not only a week or two later the youngest brother died okay drugs are killing our young people and it's so sad it broke my mom's heart I did not know this young boy but I can only imagine how my mom felt because she was paying him to work for her and I mean it is so sad you guys so we need to pray for our young people. We need to encourage them to get off of the drugs. Encourage them that they can live a joyful life um, without drugs. You know, God can change anyone. It can help you with your addiction. And um, I'm totally delivered from alcohol. It has been seven years or a little over seven years that I have not drank not one ounce of alcohol. Praise the Lord. I give all the glory to Jesus Christ, my God and Savior, and I'm, I'm constantly praying for um, our young people, and I think you guys, we should all come together and pray, because it's very sad. Okay, so let's get to Walmart and buy some beans. Gas was cheaper. It's $2.93 today. I think it was like $2.83 or $2.88 the other day. I'm not sure. I have to look back on the video, but yeah, it's $2.93 today. I'm at Walmart, you guys. 748 for a watermelon. There's the peanut butter. Okay, they did get a little bit of more corn. Great value. That's all they have. That's a great value. Oh, here's some right here. So here's the corn and here's some corn. That over there is a little bit of cream corn. Okay guys, here is the beans. Alright, right here. So, there is some empty boxes, okay, yeah. I don't know what that was, black-eyed beans, but there's a little bit here, and then there's some back there. But what I'm getting so far is uh, I've got two bags of the Great Northern beans. I got one case of corn. So, the Great Northern beans is two twelve for two pounds, which is not bad. I think I'm going to get three bags of the Great Northern beans do not have any um, of these beans, I do not believe, and it is the 15 bean soup. I'm going to get a couple of bags. Here's the pinto beans, and they're 366 for 4 pounds. Um, I don't know if I have enough to make a 5 gallon bucket, so I'm going to grab a couple more bags. So here's the red kidney beans. These are the very small pound ones for $1.42. Actually, the kidney beans are $1.90, I, I believe. Yeah, they're $1.90 for a pound, and that's not bad. So for two pounds, they're $3.76. And for four pounds, I believe, four pounds is $7.47. So I'm really shocked. I'm really happy that the kidney beans are $1.90 a pound. So I believe that I'm going to get some red kidney beans. I'm going to get the two pounds. I really like the way they're packaged like this, but... 
because I can stick a few in the cabinet, the kitchen pantry, but I think I'm going to get some of these. Got two bags of those. So that's eight pounds of winter beans and this so far. The great northern beans for a pound is $1.88. Prices have went down and I'm so excited about this. Um, I'm gonna grab some. I grabbed three bags of these because there is not that many. Grab some more chickpeas. So I'm just gonna grab two more bags of chickpeas. Grab some bag beans. I have a five gallon bucket of them, but I'm gonna grab some more three bags of the black beans. The black beans were $1.28 a bag. Navy beans are $1.14 for these little navy beans. One pound. I'm going to grab some of these. So I grabbed four, uh, five bags of the navy beans. Okay, and the last but not least, I'm going to grab some large llama beans. They're $1.87, so I'm going to grab three bags of these. Okay, so that's what my buggy is looking like so far. 20 pound bag of long grain great value rice is $10.58. And the five pound bag is $3.18. Oh no, that's the rice one kind. I don't I think this might be the same as I told you on my other video. So the great value green beans went up. It would they were 54 cents and now they're 58 cents. We were just here the other day and the great value green beans were 54 cents. They're 58 cents. And the chicken's 58 cents and I'm going to get six cans. The reason why I got from the Dollar General the other day the um, chicken soup, it was $1.90. It's $2.48 here. The peaches in the can are a dollar, still a dollar. These peaches are a dollar. So I might grab another case of peaches. See this dentit can? I'm going to put this back and get one. Oh, there's two dentit cans, okay? Two dentit cans right there. I was told that they're supposed to make sure that the, the uh, cans are not dented when they're putting them on the shelves, but evidently they do not follow that procedure. So always make sure that your cans do not have dents. So now I'm going to go home and get my counter set up to do some Mylar bag packaging. I'm not going to know what I forgot. A tripod. <laughs> I completely forgot. Alright, so I'm, I'm at home and I'm going to take all the beans out of the bag. I spent $118, but I did buy something that I've been wanting. Some ear, some a Bluetooth ear pod because Leon and I still use the one where they have the wires hanging down. So let me show you. I was going through the checkout. And I saw these on the checkout. So they were, they're the uh, True Wireless Earbuds. <laughs> My sister and them have very expensive ones, but I, I don't think we need expensive ones because actually the ones with the wires work perfect. It's just they hurt my ears. So if these work out for me and if I like these, I will get Leon a pair because he brings his, he's the only one at work <laughs> walking around with wired earbuds. Anyway, I'm taking all the beans out of the bag. I did get me some more chocolate. And I got me a small uh, carrot cake. Uh, so, yeah. Alright, so let me get the beans out and get my Mylar bags. And we're going to get, I'm going to show you how to pack. Okay, so this is the beans that I bought. So I'm going to take these two pinto beans. I've taken the ones out of the closet. So that's the pinto beans I have. I'm going to put them in a five gallon bucket. See me, I'm doing this on the floor. Um, let me show you. I have my 1000 cc uh, oxygen absorbers, my five gallon buckets. So of course y'all know I'm using this old tripod, but I didn't. So um, I'm just really ready to get the pinto beans in a five gallon bucket. So here I'm going to use this five gallon bucket. So it's real easy. Y'all can do this. Alright, if you're really serious about stocking up and you're um, concerned, if something can happen, we could go into World War III, a depression, things could get so high in the next three to six months, okay, that um, you can't afford to buy anything, alright. So, I'm just going to do all of my uh, pinto beans in here. Um, I'm just going to look at each bag, make sure, let me get y'all a little closer. So, I'm going to just check each bag as I dump it in. 
And um, they all look fine, okay? Not going to worry about it. And I put the 1,000 cc oxygen absorbers in there. Can't nothing grow without oxygen. about it. So now I'm going to put absorbers and you know that you keep them in a uh, thing. I'm going to push one down in the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and put three in here. I usually put two. So that's uh, 3,000 cc's. I don't have any upper body strength at all. I usually don't do this without Leon, but I need to get this done, and he is always quite busy. So I'm going to write pinto beans on here. I'm going to put today's date. I'm going to actually put it right here where I can see it in the closet, and I'm going to put it in the pantry. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the stock pantry with the other beans. And I also wrote 3,000 cc's on here. So a five-gallon pinto beans, a five-gallon blood beans, and a five-gallon of... Okay guys, now I'm going to do the Great Northern Beans, okay? Here's my Great Northern Beans right here on the floor, alright? I'm going to put them in the bucket. So I'm going to check them as I put them in the bucket. Let me pause it. that we have our um look at all the bags this is about how full we have our black bean bucket and i think that's going to be enough i have some bags up there i want to say okay so i'm not sure if y'all saw i put 3000 cc oxygen absorbers in here and then i'm putting the lid on the, gr the great morning beans okay here we go The uh, Great Northern Beans. There we go. Okay, y'all. <laughs> if y'all can see me, I have my iron. I'm just going to do my iron. I got my 50 cc's. I'm going to pour the beans in here. And I have all of my Mylar bags, different sizes, okay? And then I have my stickers. So let's get started. All right, so what I'm going to do is get where y'all can see me. I'm going to uh, start with the black eyed peas. I'm going to dump them in here in this bowl. Okay, let me pause it. So here is all of the beans. I'm going to use this size. It's about a five by seven. It is the zipper seal. I'm going to, I'll show you. So Leon and I, when we cook for ourselves, we only use like a half a pound of beans, of dry beans per setting. So let me get right y'all can see me. So what I'm going to do is just fill this halfway, okay, just halfway. That's about all that Leon and I eat when we're together. Maybe not even that much. I'm going to do it like that. All right. And, and not only, if you want to fill your bag, if you want to put a pound in here, you can. Because once you open this, you can still reseal it without having to put oxygen absorbers. I'm just saying, we have so many beans that it's going to take us a while to eat the beans that, that is not in the five-gallon buckets. So I want to make sure they're stored properly as we eat them in the next couple of years, okay? So um, you, can, you can fill the bag up on some, or you can just put half on the other. So I'm going to put my 50 cc in there, close back up my 50 cc. I'm going to take as much air out as I can, 
Okay, I'm gonna zip tie the Ziploc bag. And then underneath, as close to the beans as I can, I'm gonna seal it with my hot iron. The 50 cc's is gonna take the rest of the oxygen out. I'm gonna label it. Grab another bag. It's a fast process, especially when you're not videotaping. Okay, so I can get a lot of these done. I'll probably go ahead and finish them. Okay, that's about enough. I'm going to take as much air out as I can. I'm going to zip. Oh, forgot my oxygen reducer. And I'm going to tell y'all another thing. You do not have to use oxygen absorbers if you do not want to. It, it depends on how long you're planning on storing your beans. If you're planning on storing your beans for years, put oxygen absorbers in it. You do not want to open up your bean to realize that there was some kind of larva, some kind of weevil in there that you didn't know about and all of your product is ruined. So I'm just on the safe side because I don't want to be pressured into having to use all this product because Leon and I, you know, we eat beans at least two times a week. So we go through some beans. I'm going to label it, okay? And that's how I'm going to do all of my beans. I'm going to show you one more time. You take your Mylar bag. You can use a jar if you want to. I don't have room to be storing a whole lot of jars. You fill it however much you want, okay? We love black eyed peas with some ham. Oh my word. You get all of the air out of it. If you have the zipper, if you don't have the zipper, then you can still um, use your hot iron. Oh. See there, whenever I'm videotaping, I forget everything. So I'm going to put my 50 cc in there, right there. Close back up my 50 cc. Then, get all the air out of it. I'm going to close it up. And then I'm going to hot iron it as close to the bean as you can. I usually set it down on the counter like this. Oh, it's, it gets hot. <laughs> there you go. And then you're going to label it. I'm going to put labels on them like this. I'm going to write May 2022 and black eyed peas or black eyed beans. Okay, inside my kitchen pantry is where I'm going to put a large variety of these and I'm going to put them right there. I'm also going to put some there. I will put some of these in my water bags, date them, put oxygen absorbers, put it in this non-food grade bucket because it will be in my water bags and I will put a five gallon of variety my water bag beans in there. We have uh, did that before. We already did that. I'm going to do it again. Okay, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and let you do go because I have a lot of work uh, cut out for me. I hope that you're stocking up as much as you can and do not be stressed out about it. Um, it is, once you get into the routine of it, it gets a little easier as you get a little at a time and you just start packaging up. Can. All right, I hear a lot of people saying they don't want to buy uh, dried beans because, uh, you know, it takes so long to cook. If you soak your beans overnight, it doesn't take but about an hour and a half to cook. And on an open fire, you could probably cook it a whole lot quicker. But if you're hungry, you're gonna wait. You're gonna wait on a pot of beans whether you're cooking it outside or not. I love you guys and I hope I encouraged you today. And until next time, I will see you on the next video. Bye guys.